Well, there have been a number of studies over many years looking at the chemopreventative effects of aspirin. You can divide those studies into those that are primarily looking at primary prevention of cancer or preventing the progression of pre-malignant lesions. And also more recently, there have been studies which are at the moment ongoing looking to see if aspirin can prevent metastases, that's the spread of cancer, after potentially curative therapy. If we um, take the first group, there have been um, studies over a number of years that have suggested that aspirin can prevent colorectal cancer, um, but there is always a discussion around aspirin about potential benefits and risks. More recently, we've seen a number of studies that have added to the evidence base. In particular, um, there's been a study called the Seafood Trial, which is looking at the prevention of the precursor lesions of colorectal cancer. And when we look at that study combined with the previous studies, it does seem that aspirin can prevent some of these uh, early lesions and there's certainly a discussion that should be had probably with individual patients and more widely as to how we um, dis uh, consider this um, in terms of patients moving forward. And in many ways, um, cancer chemo prevention, which is essentially taking usually a tablet to prevent cancer, and you probably need to do that for 20 years, um, that's certainly something that we've learned that all the evidence to date suggests that if you take aspirin, um, for example, in your 50s, then you're likely to be preventing a cancer in your 70s. Some of the more recent data, particularly about taking aspirin um, when you're slightly older, for example, over 70, then I think the benefits and the risks are quite different. Um, and certainly one of the trials that has recently um, reported and there's been a, a lot of discussion about is the Esprit trial, which was looking at aspirin in those mainly over 70. Um, and there I think uh, there really is, uh, we need more data to be sure, but my, uh, the general feeling is probably aspirin is from a cancer prevention point of view, that's not the age to start taking uh, aspirin. Um, previous work, has, as I've said, has suggested that probably if you want to take it for cancer chemo prevention, and that needs to be a decision and a discussion that you need to have with a health professional, you should be taking it probably starting um, in your 50s. Well, certainly from an aspirin perspective, if you're thinking about taking aspirin for cancer chemo prevention, then you need to discuss this with a healthcare professional. Um, and they will be able to talk through with you the potential benefits, and they will be thinking about your past um, health conditions, also your age, um, and they will be able to give you a balanced view of what the potential benefits are and also the potential risks because we do know that for us a small um, selection of people aspirin does cause an increased risk of bleeding and that needs to be weighed up. Well I think one of the um, most important questions in terms of aspirin research is how um, does aspirin prevent cancer? Certainly the trials evidence suggests it does. We've got really um, good evidence in terms of primary prevention for colorectal cancer. 
We've also got very good evidence uh, around individuals with a condition called Lynch syndrome, which means they're genetically more predispositioned to developing cancers. And the data already published and emerging from those studies suggests that aspirin is very effective in those individuals. We're also, um, as mentioned previously, looking at the role of aspirin in preventing metastases. But within all of those studies, we still need to know more about how aspirin might be working. It may be working through platelets, but also within the oncology field, there's a lot of interest as it could be working as an anti-inflammatory or it could be both. And so in terms of sort of research priorities, I do think the translational aspects, the how is this happening, is really important. Well, the, the emerging data on aspirin um, is, is, is a continuing work and will continue for at least another 20 years if, for two reasons. One, there are a number of ongoing trials, particularly in the, in, in the what's called the adjuvant setting, the additional treatment of cancer setting, where we're assessing if you take aspirin after your radical treatment, let's say for at least five years, what are the potential health benefits? And it's very likely that we're going to need to, to look at that over a 10 to 15 year period. So how that influences guidelines, um, I think we'd have to review the whole time. At the present time, um, there are guidelines in the US about the potential benefits of taking aspirin in terms of colorectal cancer prevention and um, cardiovascular pre prevention. In the UK and in other European countries, there are less formal guidelines. So I think the answer to how, do how are guidelines going to evolve, I think they are going to need to be reviewed almost annually because there's so much research at the moment going on around aspirin, both still in the cardiovascular world, but very much in the oncology world now. And it's bringing those two aspects together, which is going to inform the guidelines. Well.